Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AxesTrader.com uh, weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody's living an unbelievable life. Again, money doesn't make you happy. Family, health, and the ability to wake up in the morning, everything else is a cherry on top. So I'm, I wish everybody, before we even start out, uh, I wish everybody nothing but happiness. Again, uh, you got to just love somebody, okay? If you want real happiness, it's not about the chase for the monetary things. It's about you know waking up in the morning and be surrounded uh, by people uh, who love you. So uh, let's talk about the markets. Before we uh, go into, we got a China deal, right? We got a China deal finally. Well, kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of. We'll talk about that in a second. But I, I want to kind of touch upon something that you know you hear a lot, okay? Um, and I, for, you know, I've been on. I think I've been on social media since 2010. Okay, and the one thing that I keep on I keep on hearing is the question of the new trader who says, "Well, I'm only a trade. You know, this is only my first year trading. How much money am I expected to make?" Okay, you're expected to make shit. Okay, uh, I'm not in the business. Okay, of living living in La La Land. Okay, I'm not in the business for selling dreams. This is reality. Okay. Your, your first year of a trader, I just want you to, to really understand and just, just really think about this. Okay. Forget about your first year, the first two, three years. Okay. And I've said this many, many times. Your job is to embrace, okay, and collect as much information about the trading business as possible. This goes from choosing a right broker from last week, obviously, you had your commissions, uh, go down to zero on many of these retail brokers. Obviously, that is a win-win for the retail public is going to uh, extend your shelf life. That's a good thing. But when you are a new trader, okay, the easiest part is clicking a mouse, right? Here's the mouse. If you can see it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Okay, whatever. Just trust me, there's a mouse there. Okay. The easiest part of trading is clicking a mouse. The hardest part of trading is clicking the mouse properly, okay, clicking it correctly. And there are so many moving parts that go into clicking a, a mouse properly, which basically is, you know, and again, not to list all of them, but again, you have to be uh, as much funded as possible, as heavily uh, funded as possible, okay? Uh, you need to have a really good process, okay? You need to be mentally sharp, okay? Uh, your emotions have to be uh, completely put to the side, Okay, and omit any feeling when it comes to putting real money on the line. Okay, and only when, and you have to be, oh, by the way, and you have to be, uh, you have to be um, pretty good at the ability to understand that losing money is part of the business. And oh, by the way, there's like 3,000 other moving parts. Okay, so when you get all that down, right, and you have all that down, and you finally kind of get the game, then you start to realize that you're only in the first inning of understanding what this market's really about. Okay, so based on all that and two thousand other moving parts, how can you expect as a new trader? And again, I don't care how you trade; it doesn't make a difference. You could trade pivots, you could trade small caps, options, futures, any way you like. How can you possibly sit down and expect anything? Right? How can you possibly put yourself in a position mentally to say, "I expect to do this. I expect to do that." It's like, again, it's like a doctor coming out of medical school and saying, you know what? I have to know everything there is to know about medicine in whole, okay? So I could be, you know, so I could start thriving. It's not about that, okay? This is the only business in the world, and I've said this for many, many years, it's a very, very unforgiving business. It doesn't care that you're a nice person. It doesn't care that you might have been a saint in your previous life. What it cares about the fact that it's trying to weed out as many traders as possible. And when you are in a platform that's trying to put you versus somebody that has 5, 10, 15, 20 years experience, it's probably going to end very, very similar. So when you are up against much more experienced traders and you're lacking 
funding and you're lacking experience and you're lacking the screen time and you're lacking a process, how can you possibly turn around, expect to make anything? Right? Think about that. And I, and I say this all the time. Okay. I don't care. Somebody could literally tell you, you know what? I am going to give you put literally a hundred dollars in your hand every single day. Okay. You as a brand new trader, you are going to mess it up. You're going to mess it up. Somehow the wind is going to take it or your dog's going to eat it. You're going to do everything possible to shoot yourself in the foot. So again, the question is, how do you expect to make anything? Okay. Now look, have I seen traders hit the ground running? Absolutely. I see this all the time. Uh, there are people in the live webinar who just mind blowing, hit the ground running the first year, year and a half, and they start doing well. That's great. But I also met so many traders, and this is more of the majority, that so many traders, again, they get the screen time. Okay. They get the screen time. They are properly funded. They're, they're in the right place at the right time, embracing the right information, but it takes them two, three, four, five, ten years, maybe never, to get exactly the same thing that another trader that's trading for six months, a year, year and a half, potentially can embrace and move forward. Again, every trader is different. Okay. Every account size is different. Every single lifestyle is different. Every trader's DNA, mentally, we're wired different. So again, how can you, going back, how can you as a brand new trader need or expect to make anything, right? It's a very, very fair question. The only way, again, to really get where you want to go is, again, baby steps, okay? I tell this all the time. Do not put the cart in front of the horse. You're not supposed to run. When you're a brand new baby, right, and you're a brand new baby, again, there's stages. You hold up your head, right? Learn how to hold up your head, move around. Then you learn how to sit up. Then you learn how to crawl. Then you learn how to walk. And then you start running, okay? Trading is absolutely no difference. You cannot skip skip, uh, skip steps A and B and C and expect it all the way to Z. It just doesn't work that way. Life is all about experience. Life is about all about stages. So if you're a brand new stage, and right, if you're a brand new trader, again, how can you expect to do anything, okay? Expectations equal emotions. When you have expectations, your emotional levels are raised, and again, you are trading with rose-colored glasses instead of walking through baby steps. And the most important part is when that is your, if that is your go-to move, expectations, expectations, instead of understanding the process, embracing the process, and understanding all the 50,000 other moving parts that it really does take to navigate the markets every single day, okay, only then, okay, only then, Will you finally start making process in your in your in your business? And again, everybody wants to trade Amazon right away, and everybody wants to trade uh, Netflix right away. Again, start with the slower moving stocks. Okay, start with the names that you can control. Start with something that you can seek trade in a very organic way. Again, remember when you're a brand new trader, your mind. Okay, think about this logically. Your mind. Okay, is is not catching up to the price action that you're seeing. So sometimes I'll see like a newer trader coming to the webinar and it's like, I, 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 how do I even enter a stock? Like for example, like a Tesla that rips up a dollar and a half, $2 in a matter of 30 seconds, 40 seconds after. How do I even process that? How are you able to even process that as a trader who's never seen that aggressive price action? Okay. These are all things that make you as a trader. So again, how can you expect to make anything. Look, are there traders, like I said, who hit the ground, right? Hit the ground running and thrive? Absolutely. In a very rare, very rare case, like I'm marveled at four or five guys in our webinar, uh, Derek and, and, and Cordova and Bjorn, uh, you know, guys that are literally sitting there first year and making money. It's, it's mind boggling. Okay. It's absolutely mind boggling. And then there's so many people, right? There's so many people trading different ways. Again, they can't put A and B together because again, their brain is not processing what their what the price action is, is actually doing. So if you are a new trader, guys, again, don't rush the process. Okay. Don't chase the money. Concentrate on the process. Okay. It's all about baby steps. It's all about taking a deep breath. It's all understanding all the moving parts, all the you know nuances of what trading is all about. This is not social media. Okay. It's, it's not social media. Some guy on random avatar tells you boom and hot stock and easy and expected. I don't know what they're doing, but they're not trading. 
sorry, sorry, sorry to, to you know to, for the spoiler alert. I don't know what they were doing. I, again, I've never had an easy, happy, boom day, happy day, right? Happy day, all exciting. I've never had that. Okay, I'm still waiting. I'm doing this 20 plus years. I'm still waiting for that. So maybe I'm doing it wrong, right? Again, maybe I'm doing it wrong. So again, unfortunately, social media has put you to the point that you have so much expectations built, but without a solid foundation. It's like the three little pigs, right? Three little pigs, right? You guys remember that with the, with the big bad wolf? One little pig, right? Blue, you know, made the house out of straw. The other little pig made the house out of hay. And the other little pig made the house out of brick, okay? All foundations are not created equally, folks. And that's the bottom line. Your job in the first two, three years, again, collect as much information as possible, understand the moving parts, slow down, understand why macro, uh, macro technical analysis works, embrace that as well. And then you'll put yourself in a position that again, if you want to one day go full time, at least you understand the game before you play it. So hopefully you guys are kind of on the right track. Because again, the last thing I want to see is people that are, that are using social media to build up that, that pedestal, right? That, 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 that emotional pedestal that they can't reach because again, their foundation, just a little, like the one, you know, two out of the three little pigs, their foundation was made out of straw or hay instead of brick. So hopefully they'll put you on the right track. So let's talk about this week. Uh, crazy week, right? Crazy, crazy week. As I, as I started saying before, we got a deal done, right? China and the United States got a deal done. Yeah, okay, not kind of, sort of, not kind of, sort of. Um, they reached an agreement, right? At least that phase one, okay, and they called this phase one of trade talks are accomplished. Now keep this in mind. There was nothing materialistic, materialistically talked about. There was nothing jotted down on our proposal. All this meant was we are in phase one for negotiating a phase two, right? A phase two meeting that we will eventually make a deal. Again, is that a good thing? It's better than nothing, okay? Uh, I don't think any trader wanted to see... Uh, China leaving the table without anything. And, you know, the market liked that news. And you can see for the last two, three days, the market really rallying, you know, really engulfing bad news or non-pleasing headlines like it did for the last two, two years, two and a half years. And they finally started embracing. So the market was going higher. Huh? You can just see this the last, you know, the last three days of, of the week on the queues. And what, what happened on Friday was... I started to think that a lot of people really missed the big picture, okay? And, and what I mean by that was we had a very, very big move, okay? Really, really big move. And all indications were saying that a deal was going to be done or at least, excuse me, or at least it was saying that the market was already baking in, okay? Baking in the idea that some sort of at least early resolution was going to was going to be put on the table, and I noticed a, a lot of traders just started buying the market in the afternoon up 400, 500, 450 points. And I tweeted out and I say, "Hey guys, just 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 think about this rationally." Again, if you want to listen, you're all adults. You want to buy stock, you buy stock. The the, the Dow like rallied literally like seven eight hundred points in like thirty six hours. Okay, you have no materialistic evidence of anything being done. Okay. And by the way, it's the afternoon, which is the the, the 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 epitome of the headline that could wreck your whole, not only day, it could wreck your week. I said, look, I'm not begrudging anybody buying stock, but for speaking from a value point of view, you guys got to be careful and yada, yada, yada. They sold off the market about 150 points uh, into the close. Again, it's not the point of being right. It's the point of looking at the market from a value sense of, 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 uh, of bias, of true value versus what you think is going to happen next. And, you know, what I, what I saw on Friday's close was a very, very interesting situation. Let me talk about that. So if you guys have been watching this video for the last several weeks, you guys notice I, keep, I kept on talking about how important for the bulls that we reclaimed 190.58. You guys remember that? 198.58, 198.58. We did that all in the open, right? We did that all in the open and we closed, right? You can see the close, 190, 190, 191 and change. So we closed above the channel. The most ironic part about that close 
it put in an inverted hammer. And again, I, I said this all, you know, I've been saying this nonstop for, for years and years and years that the most basic thing, at least for me, for technical analysis is for the market, okay, or an ETF or anything that I'm trading, if it closes, okay, on an inverted hammer, this is bearish, at least for a short-term bias. So we have a very, very interesting scenario going into uh, tomorrow's session. We closed above a very, very important level macro-wise, but we put it in an inverted hammer. So again, the question is, can you be, right, can you be a little bit pregnant? In this case, we might be. So tomorrow's session is going to be uh, very, very, you know, very, very interesting. I think uh, we could have value on both sides just because we close over the range. But again, this inverted hammer, and you can see it every single time uh, the, the stock, a stock or an ETF puts in an inverted hammer, we go lower. Again, you can see here, inverted hammer, we go lower. 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 Inverted hammer, right? To be, you know, to be... Um, to be uh, to be determined. So I think we'll have some good value. Okay, definitely good value uh, going into uh, tomorrow's session. And I'm, I'm usually have an opinion bias wise. I'm kind of right in the middle. I just, I just want to see what happens. Uh, I, I want to see what happens in the first, you know, the first 30, 45 minutes. The key is uh, a lot of names are still underneath supply. And if you look at beta, right? If you look at beta, Amazon still underneath supply. Uh, Facebook, right? It hits supply. Came back in. Beyond, again, guys, congratulations on Beyond. If, if you've been following my, my even not even necessarily even the private feed, just literally Twitter, this thing, once it lost that 144 level, and I've been tweeting this every level down, and here's 144 to 141. 141 is important. If it takes out 137, it should go down to 133. It takes out 133, it should go down to 125. It takes it, right? So it's just been going down two, three, four dollars a day every single day. I know a lot of you guys. Our long uh, puts. Some of you guys who are very, very lucky uh, to have uh, locates on this thing. Great job. I mean, absolutely great job. They're just walking this thing down. This thing is down, I think, 20, 30, hand, 20, 30 points uh, from that McDonald's announcement. And they just keep on selling the stock down every single day. Two, three points a day. Uh, tomorrow, I, 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 I will be shocked if the stock is not uh, somewhere in, in, the, in the 120s. Uh, remember, you have, I think you have earnings coming out the 28th uh, or the 29th and lockup coming out either the 28th or 29th. One of, one of those days are right, uh, flip-flop. But the most important part, uh, this looks like they're just walking this thing down two, three days. And the only buying you see is just short covering. Every, every single time there's a bid, they, they run up the stock 50, 70 cents, and then they smash it right back down. If this thing was completely 100% Easy to borrow. This thing would be under 100, man. I'm telling you, it's the only thing that's saving this thing uh, is the fact that it's not 100% easy to borrow for everybody. It stopped going up on upgrades. It stopped going up on uh, any type of PRs. Again, you got 45 million shares being released at the end of the month. Again, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, again, it should see lower prices. And I think it does uh, fill in the gap. If you look at the daily chart, again, so, unless something crazy comes out. I think it's going to start filling in the gap of $108, which is the June, uh, the June, uh, the June highs. So we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. But a really, really good move there. Uh, really solid week of trading. Again, you know, we just trade the same stocks over and over and over again. Uh, Tesla was good, could have been better. Netflix was good, could have been better. Roku was really good. I mean, Roku that pivot on Thursday from 119 to 121 at the supply was amazing. And, then only, and that happened like in a minute and a half. Um, so really, really good action. Uh, but again, that is the point. We're trading the same names every single day, like literally every single day. And again, and I say this, especially to the newer trader, just to give them some guidance. When you, when you get comfortable with a group or with certain names, you know their tendencies, you know their potential you know their risk when they're trading, uh, not the way they're supposed to be trading. So it's very, very important to kind of uh, put yourself in a situation, okay? Um, it's very, very important to put yourself in a situation that you are trading names that you can control. Because again, if you're trading random stocks, they're going to trade randomly and your results uh, will, will, will definitely mirror that. Uh, so let's talk about the pivots from Friday. Uh, again, it's all about value. It's not about quantity. It's all about value. And again, I started putting in some notes on the private Twitter feed. I get a big gap today, big, big gap today. So we need to be extra patient. Cubes, cues are gapping over that 190.58 level, which is a macro area. A close over is super bullish. Headlines are still the curveball and, and the wild card. What that means basically is when stocks gap through that number, you are going to be 
you are going to be um, kind of in a position that you are one headline away from getting killed. And if a stock in the market is gapping up average to range 90%, it's very, very tough to get good value. And that's a very, very important part. So I was very, very cautious at the open, but things just started getting, getting good. I mean, again, uh, here, you know, here's the whole feed, uh, BYND, again, I said for the aggressive trader, watch the green to red move. It's been doing this every day, going out two, three dollars a day. Note, this is again, not a pivot, just momentum. They've been walking the stock down every day for two, three days. Uh, 133 is the big level. Lockup ends at the end of the month. Again, this is not, you know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Just keep on going the same way over and over and over again. So again, finally broke the 133 and traded all the way down to the 130.64 level. I expect to see the stock in the 120s uh, this week. So great job there, guys, and especially for all you guys are still holding. Uh, Tesla, I traded the last couple of days and I'm getting these like dollar moves, dollar 20 moves for some reason. And you, and you can see why. There's been a seller in the top of the range here. And I, it, it's, I'm not frustrated about it. I don't want to use the word frustrated. But for two days in a row, I said, okay, this is the day. This is the day. It's finally going to test the 53.50 level. Every day. For all you guys in the feed and obviously in the live webinar. We've been getting good flow, right? We've been getting good cash flow on Tesla. We're just not getting that. Literally, go already, right? We're just not getting that big move. Um, and that's a little bit, of, that's a little bit frustrating. But again, I, I, I do believe that there is... Um, there is a big reload seller somewhere here, right? I have to believe there's a big reload seller uh, somewhere here. And the most important thing is once they finally clear them out, uh, I want to watch Friday's highs going into new week, but this 5350 uh, will be uh, will be a very, very important level, obviously, uh, going forward. But again, here's, here it is right here, the 49, 49 and a half, uh, 50 area. I, I got long. It went up to like 51 and change. Just, they just wouldn't let go. So I took some profits, used break even, uh, on the balance, which was fine. There was, there was nothing wrong with it. I did exactly the same trade the day before. Went up like a dollar and change and then just stalled out again. But again, I, I do believe they will clean up that seller. Uh, Netflix, nice trade. Uh, nice trade on, on, on Netflix. Uh, again, it was a big, big move into the open. So we watched that opening range high. Uh, two uh, 250, 80, 26 needs to build. Again, experienced traders only because again, we were buying the top of the range as the market was gapping. Uh, again, pretty much the same thing as... as um, Pretty much the same thing as Tesla. It, it traded. It traded not quite the supplies. It was still like another two dollars left. Uh, it ran up like a dollar. You know, came in, it came back in. So I took some profits. Uh, used break even on the balance. Obviously, stock came came back in only to wake up. So a little frustrating on Netflix and Tesla because of the just because of the measured potential. They just didn't live. But again. All cash flow is good for cash flow. Not every single trade needs to be four or five dollars. You'd like it, you want it, but you don't need it. Again, that's the most important thing of the whole grind it out sort of uh, mentality. Uh, this was a big one. Uh, TTD 195 needs to build. I think the stock got upgraded uh, on Friday. Here was the opening range right here. Right here is the opening range right here, right here, 195. So once it cleared out supply at 195, went almost to uh, 202. Great job for all you guys. Uh, who took that? Uh, Apple again. You know, sneaky area, twenty three thirty, twenty three fifty all time highs. So yeah, pretty big area. So here was Apple, the sixty minute view of Apple, right? So here was the sneaky pivot right here. This twenty two, right? This twenty two thirty. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Here it is. Sorry. About that. Uh, so here was the twenty two thirty. You could see it. You you, you could see it a few times. Two thirty three thirty. Two thirty three thirty. Two thirty three thirty. And once it started building above that, uh, once it started building above that. Uh, 2330 level. It took out the 23350 all time highs and then just absolutely exploded. Uh, great job for all you guys who had that uh, as well. Uh, Fran, I still like Fran. I still like Fran. Had a uh, we had a, we had a pivot on this thing on Thursday. I think it was 16 1630s. I think uh, or 1530s. Don't remember. It's not really my thing. I don't. I don't trade these friends. But I know it ran up like two dollars. I think it was fifteen thirties. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I still like it. I think the stock goes higher. Keep an eye on this thing for uh, this week. Uh, making a new base above Friday's highs. Uh, MDCO, nice move from from Thursday's breakout at fifty two. Not really a big move. Only only traded up to like fifty three twenties. Uh, shop was fine. I still think a shop goes higher. Uh, that two thirty three pivot. Traded right to supply again, guys. Uh, if, if you if you don't do not know where your supply zones are, you are trading blind. Here's the 233. Traded right to that uh, 237 change area. 
uh, that we talked about. So again, not, not a you know, four or five point move, nothing wrong there as well. Beyond just got destroyed. TTD we talked about. Uh, shop. Uh, never got there, obviously. Pushing to the highs. Tesla was fine. And that's it. I think that's it, right? That's it. So the moral of the story is I, I like the way um, I like the way the market handled uh, adversity this uh, adversity this week. Um, I like the way the fact that even after the market kind of got some sort of news, it wasn't one of those sell the news situations. So that was very very positive. The only conundrum, right? The only conundrum uh, curveball that I'm looking at going into the new week is yes. We are above, okay, we are absolutely above the range of 190.58. The only problem is, again, inverted hammer, which is bearish. Again, inverted hammer down, inverted hammer down, inverted hammer down. So again, as we said, as the blind man, as, as, uh, the blind man said, we shall see. Um, so yeah, let me give you guys some ideas going into uh, this week that are non-beta. Uh, let me give you some ideas. So I like this Chewy for all you guys who are trading non-beta names. Uh, stock got upgraded. Came off the bottom, nice little run, good consolidation here. Uh, if Chewy starts building above 27, it should go. Um, yeah, I mean, I use Chewy. I know a lot of you guys who have dogs um, use Chewy as well. Really, you know, really good companies. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good prices for uh, all your pets' needs. So nice looking chart. Uh, if it starts building above 27, it can go. Uh, Lift looks good. Okay, Lift looks good. First close over the 10 day again. Uh, if you've been trading with me, a lot of you guys have been trading with me for over nine years, you'll know that the 10-day is the birth of the trade. So if Lyft confirms thir uh, 40, what is it called? If, if, RIP, if Lyft confirms 30, right? 30? 40, excuse me. If Lyft conf uh, confirms 40, uh, you might have a push to 42, so keep an eye on that. Uh, MDLA, another name. Uh, again, same chart, uh, same chart as Chewy. Had a nice run off the bottom, rejected at supply. If it could reclaim 30, you know, there's a shot it goes to 32, maybe 33 if it stretches out. Uh, and let me give you, let me give you guys one more. Let me give you guys one more. Uh, SGMS, right? SGMS, really nice move. Stop that supply. If it can start reclaiming, you know, 2260 to 2270, uh, there's a shot to test uh, the upper range here. So guys, have a blessed uh, weekend, the rest of your weekend. Uh, for all you guys who are joining us uh, tomorrow via the live webinar, uh, morning strategy starts up roughly around five minutes after nine Eastern time. For all you guys who are on our private Twitter feed who work real jobs, right? This trading is not a real job. Um, the feed starts up usually about uh, 10 minutes, uh, 10, you know, five, 10 minutes prior, prior to nine o'clock Eastern time. So guys, have a blessed weekend. Love your life. Live your life. Put a smile on your face. And with God's help, I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.